ran them and sold me that car. Or else they would have taken it and put it behind the tabernacle in Jeffersonville and encased it in glass and it would have been labeled a cross in 1965. And I put my foot down and said, no. I made some unhappy friends then and they're still unhappy friends. I, I just will not yield to that. But I think it's affected my people. And I want you to be free from it. I don't want that spirit on you. <clears throat> but by grace, his blood cleanses all sin. <laughs> Just like the drop of ink in a bucket of Clorox. You'd never find the ink again. When our sins are confessed, it's put in the blood of Jesus Christ. They'll never be known again. God forgets them. They never was even done. And as long as that sacrifice is laying there, there is an atonement for us. That's all. That's it. See, we're not sinners no more. We're Christians by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. The whole earth is to be purged. There'll be such a thing that the moon, stars, and all nature will be purged. You see, what is it? The earth is renewing herself, being purged, getting ready for the millennium. The millennium's coming up and see everything that's got any filth in it is to be purged during the sixth seal. Oh my. Now do you notice on the opening of the seventh seal, it's also in a threefold mystery. This one I have, will speak and have spoke, that is the mystery of the seven thunders. The seven thunders in heaven will unfold this mystery. It'll be right at the coming of Christ because Christ said no one knew when he would return. Now folks, that's talking about the third coming. The next one is 575, paragraph 6 in this book. This one is page 5. Did you notice when the Jews asked him, you know, when we compared the scripture here with Matthew 24 with the six seals, the seventh seal was left out because you see Christ said only God himself knowed, not even the angels. No wonder it wasn't even written. You see, they, they hushed. Nothing take place then. Angels don't know it. Nobody knows it when he's coming. But there'll be seven voices of these thunders that will reveal the great revelation at that time. So I believe to us who, if we don't know it, and it won't be known till that time, but it will be revealed in that day in the hour that it's supposed to be revealed in. So the thing for us to do is to be reverent before God and serve him and do all that we know how to do and live good Christian lives. Here now we find that the sixth seal has been opened to us, we see, and we know that this seventh seal cannot be broke to the public until that hour arrives. Now, several years ago, there, were a, there was a brother that felt that that hour had arrived and he felt he got the revelation of the seven thunders. And that that seven thunders would bring on the rapture. But Brother Bram says in one place that the new name of God is known there. And when that happened, I went to visit the brother. And I asked, where did you get this? And when he started trying to explain the new name of God to me, I, I just had to say, brother, that's contrary to what Brother Bram told me. Now, there was a, a, an incident that happened that was a, considered a personal vindication that what they were teaching as the thunders was true. And it happened in South Africa. And Brother Coleman was preaching. And there's a crowd in Cape Town. And Brother Coleman, the camera's on him. And it pans out over the audience. And he says, from the pulpit, let the fire fall. And there was a flash of light in the camera. And as they moved the Pan the camera around over the audience, that flash of light stayed there, and it wound up. They again had the camera on Brother Coleman, and Brother Coleman, as the light faded away, he came out of that light. And that was so impressive to them that they spent several thousand dollars installing PAL television sets in their church where everybody in the audience could see it. And the first time that I went by New York, Brother Coleman took me to the church and seated me up in the balcony and there was a monitor right there that I could see. And he played me this that I just saw. 
told you about. And when he finished, he said, what do you think? And I says, well, Brother Coleman, I, I don't know. I, I've never seen, I, I don't know. Let me see it again. So he showed it again. And I went through that sequence I just told you about. And the second time, I, I tried to look for other things. And he wanted to comment, and I still said, well, I, I have no opinion. I, I don't know what happened. So I said, he showed it to me a third time. The third time, I says, well, I've never seen anything like that, so I don't know. Well, the next thing I knew, I was being quoted all over the world of saying I had never seen anything like that in my life. Well, a few weeks after that, I bought my first video camera. And we were having a wedding rehearsal in this church. And my daughter, Tina, brought the video camera to this church building. And that night, she was videoing the rehearsal. And the candle lighters came down, and they came up here and lit the candles. And they came back, and they started down the aisle. And, and Tina comes home and tells me, says, Daddy, something's wrong with that camera. And I said, why? She said, well, those candles followed the candle lighters down the aisle. And I says, well, you must have to have some kind of a filter or something on it. So I took the camera the next day and I went back to Rose Magnavox. Now, I'm not gossiping. I'm telling you people the truth of what happened. And I went to Rose Magnavox and I said, uh, Charlie, I said, this thing here. Did, he said, oh, he said, if, if, if something like a flashlight, uh, a bulb or something goes off in the lens of it, he said, it burns itself on the image of the lens. And he said, like she kept it focused on those candles. She said, burn it. And he said, until it erases itself off of there, those lights will go wherever it is. So me, I'm, I'm just innocent enough and honest enough. I called Brother Coleman. And I said, Brother Coleman, I got an opinion now about that. I think that you, your camera panned around and somebody shot a flash bulb off in it and it burned itself in there and it stayed in there until it faded out and you faded out. Well, folks, I haven't been welcome among the thunders since. Do you folks understand? Now tell me, what do you want? Do you want something real? Yeah. Or do you want something that's emotional that can be explained away? That's still a basic fundamental belief of those people. That was the supernatural vindication of the revelation of the thunders. Based upon, their brother Bram said the thunders would be there. Now, it originated from one paragraph in page 124 in the Church Age book. <clears throat> Brother Coleman says he was down in Puerto Rico and says he's sitting on a mountain and the Lord spoke to him and told him to, to, to go read page, one, paragraph, page 124 and so forth. And it talks about, Brother Brown was making about, well, you know, we need something to, to increase our faith. Right now we don't have, have faith to have a headache healed. And he said, but there's something written in there about it and and he said, we'll find that later on where it's written in there. And Brother Coleman believes that he found something that wasn't even written. Well, if it wasn't written, how can you find it? You so when I quizzed him, brother, tell me, were you sitting in there? Did you hear an audible voice? Or did you pick up a book and read that? And he spent 45 minutes trying to explain to me how it happened. I still don't know how it happened. And he preached it down in Beaumont, Texas. Beautiful mountain. You know, Beaumont, beautiful mountain. And they had those meetings down there. They went out and marched around the city auditorium, I think, where Brother Brown was in meetings. And then they, they started going up to Toledo, Ohio or somewhere. And he was going to preach the, the, the revelation of the seventh seal. And all of us brothers went. Brother Vale, Brother McHugh, Brother Galdona, myself, George Smith, Billy. Uh, we was all there. And Brother Coleman one night preached two hours and 45 minutes. And he kept saying... Now, I preach this, I'm preaching this the same way I preached it in Beaumont, Texas. I preached the same way I preached in Beaumont, Texas. Well, that day I met him on the campus and I said, Brother Joe, I said, have you ever listened to your tapes from Beaumont? He said, no. I said, well, you should because what you preached last night was nothing like you preached in Beaumont. And I, 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 I still say that. But it seems that there's, there's excitement about it. And I'm not belittling that, but I don't think that anybody has a revelation of these thunders. I find them under the sixth seal. 
I don't find a member of the bride doing them. I've heard them change from virtues to men to voices to doctrine to people to supernatural events. God don't change his mind like that. It just doesn't excite me. I'm sorry. But I, I, I've just, I've got to stick with what Brother Bram says. Amen. For my congregation anyway. Yeah. Brother Bram said I'm preaching anything they want to in a home church. And so that's where, but I know this will get out. But you know what? Maybe somebody will hear it and go back and check it out themselves. Maybe somebody will hear it and go back and read it for themselves. Check it out. Check it out and see if I'm lying about the video camera. I'm telling you the truth. My, mine's based on a little bit more than that. If I thought there was even a, a possibility, and I want you folks to know that, that I know that, that, that they hear when I say that I felt I heard an audible voice, I know they make fun of it. But you know, that's okay. That wasn't for their benefit. It was for mine. And I'm only encouraging you people to get your own experience. Listen for the voice of God in your own heart. Amen. Perceive God in your own life. Yes, sir. Just because I, Brother Green feels God spoke to him or taught him a lesson, I'm only trying to let you know that I think God is real. He's alive. He's supernatural. He still does the same thing for his people. I don't deserve it. There's, there's times when, when this gets to weigh in pretty heavy and I have to go back to one of those and say, well, now, if God, if you're not with me, and this, what was that? And I can't deny it. Rid yourself of the things that requires your time and presence if you want to take another step with me. I can't deny that. I know what happened in my life with that. I know the change it made. I know the change this has made. We've got something to look forward to here. Let's, let's don't look for something that's not going to happen. We'll be disappointed. Let's believe it's going to be the secret that he says it's going to be. <clears throat> now, where were we on 576.3? Is that where we were? Oh, oh now, it, it, 576.3, is that where we were? Oh, oh, now, it... it Cannot be broke to the public until that hour arrives. But, but I, hear, I hear people saying, yeah, but the bride will know. Where does Brother Brown say that? Yeah, see, see, that takes us and sets us up above everybody else. I tell you what, I, I know there's going to come a time when every eye is going to behold, every tongue is going to confess, every knee is going to bow. That's right. Uh, that's going to be the public. That's going to be the public declaration of this, according to Revelation 19. And don't worry, I got some gold nuggets in these pearls too. Now, 